Welcome, my name is Tyrone Squires and I am Managing Director of Transparent Rx and I've got an impactful maybe five to ten minute video here today I'm going to be walking through with you and the title you should be able to see there explained why your PBM isn't passed through. I've got two goals today. I want to move you to question everything you thought you knew about pass-through pricing arrangements and then the second goal is once I do that I want you to take some action so those are the two goals today I want to move you to question everything you thought you knew about a pass-through pricing arrangement and then I want you to take some action around this information that I'm going to share with you today. So it only makes sense to start with the PBM business model. So hang in there with me. Uh, I'm getting the chills because I'm so excited for you to see what I have to share with you. Uh, so, so just hang in there with me for the next five to ten minutes. Let's start with the, the PBM business model to make sure you have a firm grasp on where the loopholes are. I'm going to initially start with the contractual relationship and then I'm going to move into the financial flow. Pharmacy benefit managers contract with retail pharmacies in order to have a site from which prescriptions can be dispensed. Obviously as a pharmacy benefit manager we have to have clients in order to provide those services to those clients are third-party payers whom consist of self-insured employers, carriers, municipalities, unions, business coalitions, and then we can also get into uh, the government piece as well, uh, uh, state and federal government. Now, let me touch on the, the financial flow. Pharmacy benefit managers reimburse pharmacies, for, retail pharmacies, for the prescriptions that they dispense. Now, if that pharmacy is a, a captive or in other words a, a mail order pharmacy or specialty pharmacy owned by the pharmacy benefit manager then essentially the pharmacy benefit manager reimburses itself or pays itself as opposed to having to pay a separate separately run entity in the form of you know Joe's Corner Pharmacy and as a result the pharmacy benefit manager will bill the third party payer for those dispensed prescriptions. The problem here is twofold. From a third party payer perspective, that's the focus today. From a third party payer perspective, the problem is twofold. First, the inflow of cash in the form of rebates. Let, let me step back for a second. Rebates is the common term, but a better phrase or term would be manufacturer revenue because it addresses all monies that the manufacturer pays back to the PBM for what? For performance, market share, access, outcomes. Rebates don't necessarily address all of that revenue even though my position is that the plan spot, the, the third party payer is entitled to every single penny of that money, or at least entitled to know what it amounts to, to the tenth of a cent. Many don't. So the, so the first problem is the inflow of cash in the form of manufacturer revenue or rebates is too low. The second problem is the outflow of cash from the third party payer back to the PBM is too high or in other words the third party payer is overpaying now much of these overpayments are the result of hidden cash flows to the pharmacy benefit manager in which the third party payer believes that their pass through pricing arrangement forbids it doesn't and I'm going to show you why here in a second here are some of those hidden cash flows now I'm not going to walk through each one of these 
If you want to learn more about them, go out to my blog, blog.transparentrx.com. But I am going to come back and address this particular hidden cash flow method here as we move, move through. Now, whether or not or how much you as a third party payer are victimized by hidden cash flows depends largely on the type of or the business model in which the PBM operates. And there are three business models, traditional, pass-through, and one of the newer models, the fiduciary model. You can count on one hand the number of PBMs that offer a truly fiduciary standard. Transparent RX happens to be one of them. But today the topic is the pass-through pricing arrangement and why you believe you have entered into that arrangement but that's not what you're getting here's why transparency involves the use of pass-through pricing or or invoicing the client based upon actual cost of the drug now much has been said about transparency and much of the blame has been put on the PBM for not providing transparency. And I don't agree with that. You know, you may be saying, well, of course you don't. You're a PBM. That's not why. Transparency has to be earned. It's not given. The plan sponsor, along with their agents, have to be able to drive transparency. And the first step in driving transparency is like negotiating. No one's going to offer you their best deal up front. You sit at the table, here's the best. Rarely does that ever happen, especially in this domain. So transparency is driven. The first step in driving transparency is you have to be able to define it not just be able to define it, but then you have to be given methods to verify the transparency. So here's the big one right here. This should send chills down your spine if you believe you have a pass-through pricing arrangement. Here's what being truly pass-through means. Pass-through pricing reflects the cost of a drug after there's that, there's that chill down my spine. <laughs> there's that chill down my spine. I see it every day from some of the largest organizations where they ask, you know, during the RFP process, what type of uh, pricing model do you have? And usually there's just two offered. Fiduciary isn't even one of the ones offered 9.9 .9 times out of 10. It's sort of a learned helplessness where PBM says this is all we can do and then the plan sponsor, the purchaser just accepts it. No. Drive to what you want. So pass-through pricing reflects the cost of a drug after adjustments made for any and all financial benefits. This is legal jargon for the lowest of language. So let me go back to that hidden cash flow. DIR fees. This is a cash flow to the pharmacy benefit manager after the claim has been adjudicated. DIR fees, again, go to my blog if you want to learn more, but direct, indirect remuneration. So let's say, for example, that a pharmacy has entered into a preferred network with, with a PBM and it has agreed to, say, a lower price for, for some med generic medications or brand medications. That price can be different and is billed after the claim is adjudicated than what 
your reimbursement model called for up front in the contract, which leaves a spread. But you wouldn't know it because it doesn't take effect until after the claim is being adjudicated. So what you have are some PBMs, traditional PBMs, offering one price up front, and it looks, I mean, it looks awesome. But it doesn't reflect the true cost of the drug. And so you might be saying, well, what do I care? You should care for one reason. I can think of four or five, but one reason, the patients at the point of sale are paying a co-insurance or a co-pay that doesn't reflect the true cost of the drug. Complete transparency would include a disclosure by the PBM as to the method for determining, and here's the big one. Here's the big one. Verifying this cost. And it's different depending upon the site from which the medication eventually lands on the shelf. So, for example, if the medication is dispensed from the pharmacy, we use something called APR, actual pharmacy reimbursement. So the cost of the plan sponsor is whatever the amount the, the PBM reimbursed to the pharmacy for the product plus a service fee on top of that. That's the actual cost. From a mail order pharmacy, the actual cost would be the cost or what the pharmacy paid the manufacturer or the wholesaler for that drug. And that cost is going to be much lower than the cost or the reimbursement to the retail pharmacy because obviously there's a markup embedded in there. That pharmacy has, has, to, has to make money to, to keep the lights on, cover payroll, insurance, carry inventory. Right, but from a mail order pharmacy or you know a, a, you know whether it's a captive or a third party vendor, that actual cost is now whatever was paid to put the product on the shelf, but then the the fee for the service is going to be higher than the fee to the to uh, uh, to the retail pharmacy because the, the the drug cost is much much lower. So I say all that to say what's going on is a game of cat and mouse. And I'm, I'm showing my age here. I don't know if you remember Tom and Jerry. But you've, you've got the mouse now that was, was told by the, the cat, you know, I, I, won't, I won't eat you. And and the mouse believed the cat. I, you know, I want the, the cat. The mouse got too close, and and the cat went after him. The mouse believed the cat. So if you have a pass through pricing arrangement, and based on that definition, your cost, drug cost, doesn't reflect any and all financial benefits the PBM might receive. What you truly have is a traditional relationship, and the cat's winning, and the cat's winning. If you have a fiduciary standard or you have true pass-through pricing measured by the definition I shared with you here in this short video, although the cat is still going to chase you, the cat still wants your money. 
and you're still running away from you know overpaying because you've got to monitor performance systematically throughout the year, at least you know where you stand and you can run with a smile on your face. If you want to learn more about a fiduciary standard or how to go about procuring true pass-through pricing with your incumbent PBM, give me a call. My information's here. Take some action. Two goals today. First, I wanted to, to move you to question what you thought you believed about your pass-through pricing agreement. And then the second one was take some action. Because now you know what you really have is a traditional pricing arrangement. Have a good day.